In MathCAD Prime 11, there is a new function called VEC for creating a vector from a range variable. I did a video on summations and products of a sequence, and in that video, I used both range variables and vectors, and when I was doing these summations and products, it reminded me that range variables and vectors are not the same thing. So let me show you where this vec function comes into play. Let me go to a new worksheet. I'll click the new button and here I am on my sheet. Let me click on the sheet in the middle and I'm gonna start out by creating a range variable and I'm going to call it range one for lack of originality. Then I will use the definition operator. That is the keyboard shortcut of the colon key. And I'm gonna create a simple range variable with a step between a unit step between them in other words a step of one so i'll start with the number one and then if you hit the period a couple times it will automatically turn into a range variable this will go to a value of six let me cursor over and now i can evaluate this range one equals and there we see the evaluation and this range variable when you evaluate it it looks like a vector. Let me move everything down a little bit. So that's good for the first one, just to show you what it's like. I'm gonna create a, another range variable, and this one is going to use a user-defined step, and I will call this one range two. I'm very creative today. Then I will do the colon key for the definition operator. I'm gonna start at a value of zero, then to define the step, and use something other than a unit step, you can use the keyboard shortcut of the comma key. And now I will enter in my step 0 0.01, or actually it's, well, it's the next value in the range. And I'm gonna go up to a value of two pi, two times P control G. And this is one that I often use in a lot of my worksheets for engineering stuff. And to show you what it looks like, range two equals, and boy, we can see that, yep, there are a ton of values in this, a total of 628. Because it is taking up so much space on my sheet, I am going to delete it. I just selected it and then used the delete key. Okay, so we have our two different range variables here. And again, when you evaluate them, they look like a vector. But let's say that we were trying to use an operator like the summation on them. Let's go to the operators drop down, and then here is the summation operator. I will click on it. Then I'll use the arrow key to advance to the placeholder on the right hand side. And let's try using the first range variable, range one, and then use the equal sign, and we get an error. This value must be a matrix of scalar elements, all of which have the same units. Okay, so it is not liking this. Let's try the same thing with the product of a sequence. I will go to the operators drop down, and here is the product operator. I'll click on that. Once again, I will use the right arrow to get to the right placeholder. And if I try typing in range one and equals, we get the same error as before. So a lot of different operators and functions require you to use a vector, but it is not going to allow you to use a range variable. And this is where vec comes in, the new function. Let me type in a, another variable name and I'm gonna call it vector1. Again, I'm being very creative today with my variable names. And then I will use the definition operator. And if I go to my, let's see, let's go to the functions tab and then we have vector and matrix down here. Here is the brand new function in MathCAD 11 called vec, which will create a vector from function arguments or converts a range variable to a vector. And it can take up to three inputs, but I'm just gonna type it in manually because it is only three letters. Let's type in VEC and then open parentheses. And so one of the ways that you can create a vector is just by giving a range variable to the function. Let's type in range one, and then I will cursor over. Now, when we go to evaluate this, let's type in vector one is equal to one, two, three, four, five, six. And I want you to take a look at this 
and this up here. So this is a range variable, this is a vector, and they look exactly the same. But let's try to do a summation with this. So let me go to here, and then I will go back to the math tab, operators, summation, and let me use the right arrow, and then here I will type in vector one this time, and then the equal sign, hey, 21. It works because we are giving it a, an actual vector. And let's go to this spot. Let's do our summation, or excuse me, our product operator. Click on this, and I will write arrow once again, and then type in vector one, and then equals, hey, that's equal to 720. I'm sure you can do the math yourself by multiplying all these to one another. But now comes the issue, how do we tell which one is a range variable and which one is a vector? Well, there is a brand new function for evaluating that, and it is called isRange. In other words, is this a range variable? So let's try typing in isRange. I'm just typing it in manually, and then open parentheses, and let's try passing range one to this. Range one, and then the equal sign. It gives a value of one. That means that this is indeed a range variable. And let me see, where is it on, let me try going to the functions tab, vector and matrix. And here is, oh, that's is array. Uh, where is is range? I'm not seeing it in here, but let's go ahead. If I went to all functions, it'll probably be in here. And if I go to A to Z and, I don't know, is, ah, too many uh, things get returned, but I'm sure it is in here somewhere. There it is, is range. I can double click on it. And this time I will pass the name of the vector to it, vector one, and then equals. And that gives a value of zero. So if it is a range variable, you will get a one. If it is not a range variable, you will get a zero. Okay, so one way that you can use this vec is by passing a range variable to it. But just like we defined the range variable up here, you can also define a vector using those kinds of inputs. So let's create a new vector and I'll call it vector two. Very creative today. This is going to be equal to colons equal vec. And I'm gonna pass two arguments to it. Let's pass, I'll do parentheses, value one and six. And then let's go over here and let's evaluate this. Vector two is equal to one, two, three, four, five, six. So again, here we have created this one and this is actually a vector just like vector one up here. All right, and the third way that you can use the vec function, let me click over here and I'll create vector, can you guess what I'm gonna type here? Vector three, vector three colon equals vec and I'm going to give it three inputs. Let's give it an input of zero, and then comma, 0, 0.01 to define our step, and then two pi, two p control g for the pi. And once again, we can cursor over and we can evaluate this vector three equals and here we have a vector of all those different values. Again, it takes up a lot of real estate on my sheet, so I'm going to delete it. And so there you have it. That is the new vec function, and you can pass a range variable to it, a starting value and an end value, or a start value, a step, and an end value. And if you want to test if something is actually a range variable or a or not a range variable, you have the new isRange function.